Okay. Um, so uh, the states uh, and the state military apparatus's ability to murder without touching really brings us to the subject of the politicization of touch. And this brings us to our next speaker, Aaron Manning. Um, Aaron Manning holds a university research chair in relational art and philosophy in the Faculty of Fine Arts at Concordia University in Montreal. She is also the director of Sense Lab, a laboratory that explores the intersections between art, practice, and philosophy through the matrix of the sensing body and movement. Her publications include The Minor Gesture with Brian Masumi, Thought in Action, uh, passages in the Ecology of Experience from 2014, Always More Than One, Indiv Individuations Dance from 2013, and Relationscapes, Movement, Art, and Philosophy from 2009. Today, she is going to share a reading from her book, The Politics of Touch. Thank you, Erin. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and thank you, Rasvana and Yorinda. Um, I've never been invited to read from my work for, before, and I told Rizvana that I've always wished that academics would recognize um, that we don't need to keep producing new work, that we've written work before and we could return to that work. So I'm very um, moved by the invitation, but also a little bit awed by the, by the uh, task. I uh, was writing Politics of Touch in 2003, so it's been a while since I, I wrote Politics of Touch. It was published in 2007, but books have a way of taking uh, time. Um, and it's uh, the first of, uh, of what I came to think of as a trilogy on movement with relationscapes and always more than one. Politics of Touch came from a question I had about the um, concept of the body politic and its lack of movement. Uh, in particular, the creation of the idea of the modern political subject that came after the Treaty of Westphalia, through which we got the, the concept and the reality of the nation state. So Politics of Touch explores this through different prisms. Um, and uh, since I'm reading from across the book, um, obviously skipping a lot. In Politics of Touch, I explore the ways in which research on the senses can extend beyond common sense approaches to the senses and to the body. To write about the senses, it is necessary to write against the grain of a mind-body reason senses model that continues to privilege staid readings of gender, biology, and politics. To write against the grain is to become sensitive at all junctures to how the body is defined, composed, and compartmentalized. The challenge when working with the senses is to not presuppose that we already know what it means to sense. Politics of Touch seeks to do at least two things. One, to expose the ways in which the senses touch in particular, but always an implicit interaction with other senses foreground a processual body. And two, to explore how thinking the processual body potentially influences the ways in which we articulate and live the political. The object of inquiry is therefore the body. To speak about bodies is first and foremost to explore the ways in which bodies move. I locate touch as one way of thinking this body in movement. This is not to give touch preferential treatment. Throughout, touch is to be understood synesthetically, operating along relational vectors always in dialogue with other senses, all of which there are likely many more than five. To think touch synesthetically is to appreciate all of the ways in which movement qualitatively alters a body. As becomes apparent by the end of Politics of Touch, the senses alter the dimensions of the body, inciting the body to move in excess of itself toward the world. 
sensing toward the world implicates the body in a worlding that reorganizes conceptions of space and time. The body at work in politics of touch is a sensing body in movement. This is not a new body, though it always networks in new and diverging ways. It is a body that has always emerged through and alongside other bodies, be they political bodies, gendered bodies, raced bodies. What is new about the body foregrounded in politics of touch is not its shape or form, but the relational matrices it makes possible. In politics of touch, I attempt to engage the reader to stray from a common sense reading of the senses. This, I hope, will allow the reader to imagine and express a politics that challenges the notion that the political body is a stable locus of enunciation. Politics should work by invention. Politics of touch makes a pact to invent, eventfully, what a body can do. Invention here takes the matter form of touch. Touch, alongside politics, invents by drawing the other into relation, thereby qualitatively altering the limits of the emerging touched, touching bodies. Touch is not graspable as a stable concept. Relational time, the only thing we can grasp momentarily are touches, inventions. Relational time, space, provisional embodiments are inventions of touch. The, sense, the body senses in layers, in textures, in rhythms, and juxtapositions that defy strict organization into a semiotic system. Can I suggest that touch as a movement of desire toward another is also a violent writing of the relationship between self and other? Touch inaugurates a violence since it compels us to write the relationship between self and other differently. Does this not imply that any attempt to touch the political is to engage violently with the discourse of politics? I believe that when I reach out to touch you, when you and I create a space-time for our bodies to react reciprocally, we make the decision to acknowledge a certain kind of violence. This violence which I encounter in my desire to touch you is not necessarily a violence toward you or toward the space-time we create through our touch. This violence is symbolized through the entry into the realm of unknowability. There is no ethics, writes Derrida, without the presence of another, but also, and consequently, without absence, dissimulation, detour, difference, writing, a violent opening. Critiques of violence are not without violence. My exploration of a politics of touch is a potentially violent encounter with the unknowable. This is not a violence I want to condemn if we think of a violence that moves in more than one direction, a violence quite different from, the sustain, from that sustained within the hierarchical system of sovereignty and security ordained by the nation state, violence need not necessarily be considered a threat to difference. Rather, violence can work as a reminder of that very difference that prevents me from being subsumed into the self-same. A politics of touch suggests that one way in which bodies resist normative politics, such as those of the nation state, is through reaching across the boundaries imposed by the body politic. This crossing does not necessarily inaugurate a difference in the political structures at hand, but it does engender an adjacent body, a supplementarity, an individuation, that potentially stands in the way of preconstituted organizations of body. The effect of this is by no means utopian. The more complex the bodies at hand, the firmer the imposition of the norms of the governing body politic. Nonetheless, engenderings brought forth through a politics of touch open the way to a wider selection of bodies, allowing us to explore them in all of their engendered and engendering matter forms.
Engendering gender is a risky enterprise. Within engendering, matter takes many forms. Nature is abstract potential, leading us toward the Spinozian statement that we do not yet know what a body can do. Engendering here presupposes the body's capacity to deviate, create, and mutate. To think nature in flux is to foreground the nonlinear dynamics and the unpredictable potential of the transformation of matter at stake in all endosymbiotic relations, be they biological, technological, or political. Sex becomes an event. Eventfully, sex actualizes modes of relation and reproduction of information that unleash affect at all levels of a body in formation. A body never stands alone. It becomes a body biological, a body technological, economical, political. It can also become a gendered body. But first and foremost, it is an engendering body reaching toward its individuation in relation. To be a body is to be thick with thought. To think is to open the way toward the political as that which must continually be rethought. It is important to register the political voice in this narrative I am weaving in order to assess the vitality of the kind of expression made possible through sensing. A politics that senses rather than investing all of its energy in the practice of signification is not a politics without rigor. Indeed, there may be nothing less rigorous or more apolitical than the acceptance of signification as the basis for experience. This only reinstates the dichotomy between reason and sensing. A politics of touch is an impossible politics. It is a politics of the future anterior, the will have come, a politics that is impossible because it has no horizon. A politics of touch is a passage rather than a presence. My skin marks this passage, my wrinkles betray time is fleeting, my touch reaches toward the incongruity that is my own alterity, your difference. I cannot be indifferent to that which I cannot even conceive. This is the challenge of a politics of touch. Now is the time of a politics of touch, but not a now which remains in the present, rather a now that dances between tenses, undulating on the inner crevices of the skin of experience, expressing itself through a touch that cannot quite capture the passage of time, even while continuing to reach out. Now is a recurrent potentiality. Now is to be negotiated again and again. Now is the ever-recurrent promise of the non-adequation of the present to itself. You will be organized, write Deleuze and Guattari. You will be an organism. You will articulate your body, otherwise you're just depraved. You will be signifier and signified, interpreter and interpreted, otherwise you're just deviant. You will be a subject nailed down as one, a subject of the enunciation revealed into a subject of the statement. Otherwise, you're just a tramp. These are words through which the body politic of the nation state tends to operate. These are words that underpin the discourse of the secure body. Some bodies are easier to secure than others. My lesbian body, my gay body, my diseased body, my female body, my aged body, my neurodiverse body, my black body, these bodies are more costly. But even these bodies are useful to the state. They make possible the insecurity on which the need for security is predicated. Be secure, conform. Even your distorted body can be taken into the fold. Confirm your confirmation by organizing your excess. We may be able to protect you, but hide your difference at all costs. The terrible revelation is that bodies can never truly conform. Bodies disarticulate. One of the symptoms of this disarticulation is touch. Disarticulation is not the opposite of articulation. It is its supplement. Touch provokes disarticulation by marking the impossibility of a final reaching toward. Touch makes possible the image of a body falling apart, leaving parts of itself behind incorporeally becoming. 
Touch reminds us of the ghost we see when a camera catches our movements multiplied. Touch evokes a spectral politics, a politics of capture that never quite reaches its goal. Touch is an adventurous sensation. How to negotiate a politics of touch in this complex interplay of security, sovereignty, globalization. How to speak of the body without securing sense. How to speak of the securing of sense when sensing implies a thinking of the event always before and an excess of its securing. These are the challenges inherent in writing, movement, bodies, politics. The tendency remains through the writing to give precedence to a stagnant humanist vocabulary that can be disciplined, controlled. It is difficult not to fall prey to this tendency. Politics of touch fight the impulse, continuing to challenge the ontological force of existing politics, of identity, incarceration, sovereignty, and violence wherever they emerge. There is no stopping. Ontogenesis requires invention. All radical engagements are inventions in some sense, unthought, untried, extraordinary. Let us improvise. Thank you.